please welcome Juan Garzon to the stage as he delivers Innovate Intentionally. Innovation has long been misunderstood. It was often attributed to artists and inventors and uh, especially gifted people who just have these bursts of inspiration while they're taking a shower. Creativity was something you were either born with or you weren't. But science is actually realizing that that may not be the case. As Milton Glaser of I Love New York fame uh, once quoted, there is no such thing as a creative type. Uh, it's not like a creative person just comes in the room and makes things happen. Creativity is a verb, and one that's a very time-consuming verb. Now, there's a lot of books on the subject, and one of my favorites is Where Good Ideas Come From by Stephen Johnson. In it, Stephen talks about how many of the innovations throughout history have come from small ideas that have come together to create these innovations. He calls it ideas having sex. Now, how can we use this to become more innovative? Well, let me tell you a story. Back in the 1950s, um, nobody really thought that a, a little girl would ever play with a doll that looked like an adult. Right? They played with stuffed animals or baby dolls. And it wasn't until a Mattel executive, his wife, was vacationing in Germany, and she found these pretty little dolls in a window of a shop. And she bought a few, brought them back home, and sold them as Barbie. Now, what she may or may not have known is that this little doll, Lily, in Germany, was actually a sex doll. It was sort of a novelty gag gift that you bought for other adults, not for little kids. But her outsider's uh, um, perspective allowed her to see this in a way that other people didn't and create an opportunity and a, um, a brand that still exists to this day. So the first thing I want to leave you with is experience new things. And if you can, travel internationally. It will open up your minds to new sights and sounds that will help you think differently. But if you can't travel around the world, at least get outside of your cubicle. One great example of this is a NASA scientist who would, every time he had a problem at work, he would take a walk with his dog. And it was on one of these walks that he um, had his dog run into the woods, and when the dog came back, he had all these burrs stuck to it. And as he was taking the burrs out, he came out with this idea to use that to keep stuff from floating away in the spaceship. He called it Velcro. Um, once you, um, Peter Drucker, a management consultant, once said that uh, the one thing that you need to do to be a better business person is to learn to play the violin. Now he didn't actually mean to learn to play the violin, he meant learn something new that is completely outside of your comfort zone. A great example of this is Johann Gutenberg, the inventor of the printing press. He actually came with this, like, come up with an idea for the printing press because he kind of had a hobby in wine. And the way winemakers in the Rhine Valley used was this screw-type pr uh, wine press. And it was from there that he used that same mechanism to add text to paper. Now, once you learn something new, you know, get a hobby, uh, uh, learn a new language, or do whatever, then share it. Share it with everybody that you possibly can. Share everything that you learn. A great example of this, we already heard his name today once, is Steve Wozniak who did not create the Apple computer to sell, to sell to customers. Rather, he created it to impress his friends at the Home Brew Club, which was essentially just a bunch of geeks who got together in their garages, shared ideas, and built computers. In fact, Steve Wozniak would go out and build a computer for anybody who wanted it and give his specs away for free. And it was through those idea-sharing sessions and through all those iterations that he actually came out with the Apple computer, which then Steve Jobs helped him sell. So get plugged in. Share as many ideas as you possibly can, and it's through the interactions and feedback that you get from other people that your ideas will really grow. And last, but certainly not least, embrace the oddballs. Yeah, those are my kids up there. Um, I, I ran across a study recently that was kind of disheartening about a bunch of teachers who were surveyed, and they asked them, do you want creative kids in your classroom? And they all said yes. But when they asked them to rate the characteristics of their students that they wanted, all the ones associated with creativity fell at the bottom. They wanted students who did what they were told and colored between the lines. So think about that and embrace people who think differently than you do. Now that we know how to innovate intentionally, let's do it. You may not know, but uh, Just Do It actually came from, uh, was inspired by the famous last words of Gary Gilmore, one of the last people to be executed by firing squad here in the United States. When asked if he had any final words, he said, let's do it. Pretty bold stuff to say right before you get shot. 
And it's actually that message that I want to leave to you. Let's do it. Let's use innovation and innovate our ways to better businesses and to a better community and just maybe to a better world. Thank you.